Hi everyone, welcome to Engineered Math. In this video, I will teach you about branches, nodes, loops, and meshes. So, what are branches, nodes, loops, and meshes? So, these are the common terminologies that we can have when we deal with every electrical circuit. So, let us define each one of them and let us identify them for a given circuit. So, let's start with branches. So, branches represent a single element such as voltage source, resistor, etc. So, it means that any electrical component within a circuit can be considered as a branch. So, if we try to consider this circuit, we have five branches here. We have the 10 volt DC source, we have the 5 ohm resistor, we have the 2 ohm resistor, we have the 2 micro Henry inductor, and we have the 5 microfarad capacitor. So, these all electrical elements within this circuit are considered branches. So, we have a total of 5. Okay? Next, let's have the nodes. So, nodes is the point of connection between two or more branches. So, let's consider the same circuit. So, since we have identified already the different branches for this circuit, which are all the electrical components within this circuit. So, when we say nodes, it is the point of connection between two or more branches. So, for example, if we consider this 10 volt source and this 5 ohm resistor, they connect at a point. So, what is that point of connection? Obviously, this point, right? So, therefore, this point is considered a node because it connects the two branches, which is the 5 ohm resistor and the 10 volt DC source. Okay, so let's name it as node A. So, what else? Obviously, we have nodes here, here, and here. Why? Because they all connect the different branches like the 5 ohm resistor, the 2 ohm resistor, the 2 micro Henry inductor, and the 10 microfarad capacitor. So, although here we can see three points, it is actually considered a single node. So, let's name it as node B. So, these three points can be considered as a single node B. Why? We can actually stretch this wire. So, if you try to stretch the wire, it can look like this. So, this is the 5 ohm resistor, right? This is the 10 volt DC source. Okay, this is the 2 ohm resistor. This is the 2 micro Henry inductor. And this is the 10 microfarad capacitor. And their end terminals are all connected. Okay? So, so far, we have identified this node A, right? And for this considered node B, it's actually a single point where the branches 5 ohm resistor, 2 ohm resistor, 2 micro Henry inductor, and 10 microfarad capacitor are connected when the wire is just stretched. Okay? So, there is another node in this circuit wherein it connects the lower terminals of the 10 volt DC source, the 2 ohm resistor, the 2 micro Henry inductor, and the 10 microfarad capacitor. So, these are the points of connections, right? But also, we can consider this as a single node, let's say node C. So, if we try to stretch also the wires, we can connect them as a single point at this node C. Okay? So, for this circuit, we have a total of 3 nodes. Nodes A, B, and C. Okay? Next, let's have the loop. So, loop is any closed path within a circuit. Okay? So, to illustrate the loop, let's consider the same circuit. So, we can find a loop within the circuit by considering a current that can flow from a starting node of a circuit, then passing through another node until it goes back to the initial node. Okay? So, we have considered the three nodes within this circuit, right? So, we have this node A, we have this single node B, and we have this single node C. So, if we try to find a loop within this circuit, so let's use different color. We can start from node A, going to node B, going to node C, then going back to node A. So, we have the loop A, B, C, A. Okay? We can also have another loop starting from node A, passing through the 5 ohm resistor, 
then going to node B, passing through the 2 microhenry inductor, and going to node C, going back to node A, passing through the 10 volt DC source. So we have the loop A, B, C, A, but includes different components within the loop. Okay? We can also have another loop starting again from node A, passing through the 5 ohm resistor, going to node B, this time passing through the 10 microfarad capacitor, going to node C, then going back to node A, passing through this 10 volt DC source. So we still have node A, B, C, A. Okay? Likewise, we can also have starting from node B, passing through this 2 microhenry inductor, going to node C, then going back to node B, passing through this 2 ohm resistor. So we have node B, C, B, where it involves only two components inside the loop, the 2 ohm resistor and the 2 microhenry inductor. We can also have this loop starting from node B, passing through this 10 microfarad capacitor, going to node C, then going back to node B, passing through the 2 ohm resistor. So we still have node B, C, B, where the components involved is the 2 ohm resistor and the 10 microfarad capacitor. Next, we can also have this node starting from B, passing through this 10 microfarad capacitor, going to node C, then going back to node B, passing through the 2 micro Henry inductor. So we still have loop BCB with components 2 micro Henry and 10 microfarad capacitor. Okay, so let's now consider mesh. So mesh is a loop which does not contain any other loops within it. So mesh is actually a special type of loop where it does not contain any other loop within it. So based on the loops that we have listed, what can we consider as a mesh? So obviously, we can consider ABCA, the loop BCB, and the loop BCB. Why? Because these three loops does not contain any other loop within it. For example, for the loop ABCA. So this loop ABCA, aside from this actual loop, it consists also what loop? This loop BCB, right? So therefore, it's not considered a mesh. Likewise, this loop ABCA, it is not a mesh because it includes what other loop? This loop BCB and this loop BCB. Okay? So we only have three meshes for this circuit. Now let's have the definition for series and parallel connections. So let's start with series. So it states here that two or more elements are in series if they exclusively share a single node and consequently share the same current. While for parallel connections, it states here that two or more elements are in parallel if they are connected to the same two nodes and consequently have the same voltage across them. Okay, so if we try to consider the same circuit, let's try to write first the nodes that we have, node A node B, node C. So the 10 volt and the 5 ohm resistor are in series. Why? Because they are connected to a single node, which is this node A, right? While this 2 ohm resistor, 2 microhenry inductor, and 10 microfarad capacitor are in parallel because their terminals are connected to two same nodes, which are nodes B and node C. Okay? So for series, just like what we've discussed, there will be a constant current that will flow through them. So the current that will flow through the 5 ohm resistor and the 10 volt DC source is the same. While for the parallel components, the voltage drop across them will be the same. Okay? So the voltage drop, let's say V volts across the parallel elements 2 ohm resistor to microhenry inductor and 10 microfarad capacitor will be equal. Okay? Okay, so I think that's it for this video, branches, nodes, loops, and meshes. So I hope you learned something from this video and thank you for watching.